So today I'll be upgrading an HP Compaq 8200 small form factor Elite Series PC. As you can see, this thing has seen better days. Part of the front panel is chipped off. We have some scuffs here um, and a little bit of wear and tear all around the case. The innards seem to be totally fine though and I'm just going to consider this a sleeper PC. Uh, we're going to set it up for light gaming and workstation use in 2023 which is significant in a way as I'm guessing this thing shipped around 2011. So this PC currently has an i5-2400 Intel CPU, 4 cores and 4 threads. It's not a bad CPU and it would do in a pinch, but I have this i7-2600 4 core, 8 thread CPU to install and that's going to be a nice boost in performance. Uh, to accompany that, I have a 256 gigabyte Intel solid state drive. And we have 16 gigabytes of silicon power, 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. I believe this combo will uh, max out at 1333 megahertz. It's no harm to install 1600 megahertz, but just be advised that you won't be running at that speed. And I also have this ASUS Silent GeForce GT 1030 graphics card with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. And I'll also be installing this TP-Link AC1200 uh, Wi-Fi PCIe card. Little antennas here. And now I also have this little fan. And what my plan is, because this PC only has one air intake fan beyond this grill connected to the CPU and in a fan shroud, this really only offers passive cooling either through the PCIe lane slots, uh, these grills right here, and, and we do have some heat coming out from the power supply fan. Uh, my plan is to mount this little fan that I pulled out of a Think Center on the rear grill here on the inside and we'll add some extra heat exhaust for the system and I th think that'll help out. Uh, either way it should be kind of fun to install. So let's get this thing over to the workbench and get started. Alright so here we are at one of my workbenches which features a 1920 by 1080 HP monitor that we'll be testing on later on. And just enough space to get everything done. So let's open up the side panel. And the first thing that we'll do is install the solid state drive, which is underneath the optical drive right here. If you push this green button down, that will release the lock mechanism for the optical drive. And you'll be able to lift it out just like that. Let's put that off to the side. And inside here is the hard drive bay. So there's no mounting for a solid state drive. That's okay, we'll use this plastic zip tie to hold it in place. So it's quite simple to remove this fan shroud. Just have to get the cables out from the side and simply lift it up. And here we have our heat sink with the copper pipes. So normally you just need a Phillips head screwdriver, but in this case you do need a Torx bit. Um, I have this iFixit kit and it has all different shapes and sizes. So this does have some fresh thermal paste on it. I did recently repaste it. So let's take that out and I'll grab the i7. Just a quick reminder to line up the arrow on the CPU with the arrow on the motherboard or the uh, CPU tray, just so you don't bend any of the pins in the LGA socket below. So let's hit this with some new thermal paste. 
So I've got some Arctic Thermal Compound MX-4. All right, so now while we have easier access to the ram sticks, let's take these two out that were potentially causing problems before. All right, now I believe for dual channel memory, we will want to install into these two dim slots. That is dim two and dim four. And let's get that fan shroud back on. All right, so we're ready to install the small exhaust fan. And I have two black zip ties. And you'll notice here, on the motherboard, there is what appears to be a fan header, but that is white. But you wanna look for this uh, more tan maroon header on the motherboard instead. And for this job, I did have to clip off the little plastic bits on this fan header in order to make it fit. And there's four pins here on the motherboard, on the uh, fan header on the motherboard. And as you can see, there's only three pins here. So you want to install the fan header on the three pins closest to the power supply. So it should look like this. You'll see one pin right beside the casing and that is the orientation that you want it in. All right, so now on to the graphics card and um, Wi-Fi card installation. So we'll take this one out, this out first. And the next one that we remove is right here in the middle. And the graphics card can go into this black PCIe lane right here. And the Wi-Fi card can go into this PCI lane right here. All right, so now as you can see, uh, the graphics card has this big, big old heat sink and the Wi-Fi card also has a heat sink. Um, the rationale behind the little mini exhaust fan is that the heat will be rising up and blowing this way from the CPU fan and then sucked out, uh, at least partially sucked out by the small fan here. So yeah, um, in my mind, it can only help. All right, so now that I have everything installed, all the upgrades, I'm going to take a moment, install Windows 10. And if you need any help with that, um, reach out to me in the comments and I'll share the instructions that I have outlined in several of my other videos. All right, so I do have Windows 10 installed now. And as you can see, I made some further upgrades. Um, I moved the solid state drive to fit underneath this hard drive caddy. And I found a multi-card reader that I installed. So I decided to put it there instead and uh, re just removed the plastic panel here. So we have an SD card reader, eSATA, USB 2.0, other cards that probably aren't really used much in 2023, but uh, it's still kind of cool to have the option and why not? I don't know what else I would do with that. So what that required, was an extra SATA cable connection to the motherboard and just a simple USB 2.0 connector, which also is featured on this motherboard. So now we know there's actually two of them. I have my gaming SSD hooked up to the PC via a USB 3.0 cable. And first up, we have Skater XL. All right, so we have everything set to 1080p resolution, graphics quality set to low, windowed full screen, and VSync activated. Uh, we got some pretty smooth gameplay. This game, you don't really need to have, like, say, 60 frames per second or over. That's always nice on a better system, but uh, 
even up to 30 frames per second. Uh, notice that we're averaging around 45 to 50 frames per second and dropping down to the mid 30s. But yeah, this game is totally playable. You can still have a really good experience and you can play online with friends or whatever you like. Yeah, uh, let's mark this one off the list as performing well. And as we can see, usually I find there's pretty big GPU usage in this game. And, but the temps are okay, like we're sitting at 74 degrees for GT 1030 and the CPU is at a mild 48, 38, 40 degrees. Yeah, pretty nice. I thought I'd give Fortnite at 1080p a try um, just to see how well it performs. So I have everything set to low and on performance mode. So let's see what kind of performance we actually get with this setup. As we can see, the graphics are actually not that bad. And it's not too choppy with a V-Sync off. Yeah, this is a uh, not too bad so far. I should play in performance more more often. All right, as we can see, um, we're averaging over 120 frames per second, 160. Um, I'm pretty impressed. I don't really play this game very often, and yeah, uh, performance mode makes a big difference. Of course, it's uh, pretty pixelated. The graphics quality is not the best, but again, this is a budget setup, right? So, um, you know what? I'm pleased with the performance, and I can totally see myself playing a game like this. All right, so I thought I'd try out LEGO with Builder's Journey just because it's a small download and it's kind of a fun little time waster. Um, so I have the graphics set to 1080 again and pretty much at a mixture of medium and low. Uh, looks like we average around mid 20s to 30 frames per second or so, uh, which is, in my opinion, totally acceptable for a game like this where you don't really need to worry so much about frames per second and stuff like that. Alright, so I thought I'd try Dead by Daylight, one of my favorite games to pick up and put down. Um, I have the graphics settings set to low with resolution at 100%, so playing at 1920 by 1080 resolution. Um, you can get better frames per second by setting the resolution down lower, but I just kind of wanted to see how it would perform just sitting idle in the menu or getting around mid 30s frames per second. Let's see how it is for gameplay and if we need to adjust the resolution or not. All right, just starting the match, we're sitting in the mid 40s for frames per second. Uh, moving around, I don't see a lot of screen tearing or anything. Uh, V-Sync is natively activated in this game, so that's part of the reason why. But so far, so good. Let's see what happens when a little bit more action is on the screen like right now. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good. All right, so pretty consistent frames per second. Um, totally playable. So overall, I'm very pleased with how this upgrade turned out. We have this uh, sweet multi-card reader and USB 2.0. Uh, we have our 
I actually switched out the optical drive uh, for a slightly faster one. And yeah, uh, I think the uh, minor blemishes kind of add to the aesthetic of the case for it being kind of an incognito budget gaming machine. Um, yes, we do not have the benefit of USB 3.0, but we have a multitude of USB 2.0 ports. And as we saw, this GT1030 can perform with a lot of games in 1080p resolution, and this uh, TP-Link Wi-Fi card is actually really good if you have a solid internet connection at home. And that air exhaust fan, um, I'm a big fan of it. I'm happy that I found a use for one of my tiny fans that I just have laying around. And overall, uh, yeah, hopefully this video gives you some ideas on how to upgrade your small form factor PC, whether it's a Lenovo, HP, Dell, whatever it might be. Um, hopefully this gives you some inspiration or if you did something similar, maybe you can share that in the comments. So feel free to ask me anything as well. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching.